Yeah. Hello, everyone. How are you? My name is Diane Donnelly. I am with the Donnelly Group of Keller Williams Flagship of Maryland. And today you are tuning in to Facts Not Fears, a series that was created due to all the information out there about COVID um, and how it's affecting things, the market, um, the stock market, the real estate market, our mental health, our physical health, et cetera. So I wanted to bring us all together to a place that is safe and a place that is giving you real information about things that you need to know. Um, and today we are fortunate to have Terry Cooch talk with us about home staging and the importance of home staging uh, when you make the decision to sell your home. So Terry, if you would just say hello to us and then I will introduce staging and uh, tell folks what staging is and, and we'll talk through some of the questions that we had. Okay, good morning, Diane. Good morning. So a little bit about uh, Terry Cooch and TLC Home. I've been in business for 12 years, started as an organizing company, and um, just over time became a staging company that still organizes. Um, and that's, that's my story. That's your story? You're sticking to it? Yeah. It's a good story. <laughs> so, Terry, the way that we live day to day and the way that we prepare our home to put on the market for sale are two different things. Um, and as a realtor, we have to go through the home and oftentimes tell people, you know, this is beautiful, your house is lovely, and I would change these things. So it can be a very sticky, sensitive conversation that we have, and we have to do it with tact and grace. Um, and it's so important to have the conversation because as we know, people make more money in less time for homes that are staged. So if you would first define what is staging? Staging is um, bringing a home to its best appearance for selling. So it is um, actually when I arrive for a consultation, I say, hi, I'm here to undecorate your home. So it's, it's taking the personal, uh, the personal things, the personal taste away and showing the features of the home and selling that lifestyle as well. Right. So, so one of the things that I talk to people about when we have a consultation is, is the staging and what we're going to do. And I tell people that when I talk to Terry, I'm going to talk to Terry about the demographics of the person that is going to come. So, um, so that you can stage the home to what the person who is buying it is going to be looking for. So that could be lifestyle. That could be, so, so here, here's an example of one where um, where there's a lot of staging that would need to be done. So an older person who's been living in the home for a very long time needs to sell their home and they have older furniture, they have um, older decor, they have wallpaper that might be older, paint colors that are dated, things of that nature. And the buyer profile might be a younger couple coming in to look at that home. So that is a very, very much a mismatch of the way the home should show to the buyer. So we, when I go in and talk with them, I say the stager, I've asked the stager to come in and be as critical as possible so that they're prepared, as critical as possible to prepare the home for the most likely buyer profile. And then I turn it over to you, Terry, and I say, Terry, here's the deal, here's what we're looking to do. Um, and then you come in with the eyes of a buyer who is the most likely candidate, if you will, for that home. So tell uh -huh. us a little bit about, about that, about your psychology when you walk into a home that you have to stage. Um, the first thing I'm thinking about um, is making sure that that homeowner is on board. So you're awesome at that. You, they're, they're pretty much vetted and, and ready. Um, but one of the things I do like to, especially for that senior client, is get them to think of the age they were when they moved into the house. And then I'll say, most likely that's your, that's your buyer. Mm -hmm. um, I will have already been provided that information, but to, just to get them to think back. Um, and so, and then I just let them know, we want to appeal to that buyer, that, that particular buyer. And that really helps them. Um, that's really, I, that's really, really good. The, Bringing it back it, to, you know, what was it when, what, when you looked at this home and you fell in love with this home, that's what we're going to try to, to get back. I love that. That's a great suggestion. And the other thing that I bring back to them is back then, um, and myself included, when I bought a house, I knew I was going to be ripping down wallpaper and I knew I was going to be, you know, Miss Handy Mom and, and spending my non-mom hours, 
um, improving a home. And that's exactly what I've been doing here for 27 years and still, you know, improving this home. But the new buyer, <laughs> the new buyer doesn't want to do that. And uh, they don't want to see a list. Uh, they don't want to have this list of things to do that they're going to be doing over the next five years. It's just a whole different mindset now. And I let them know that. I let the, the current seller know that, that, um, and, and they'll usually say, yeah, my son doesn't like to do any of this, you know, any of this. And um, as well as both, both um, members of the, uh, both adults are working and they don't have time. They want to have a good time on the weekends. They want to spend time with their children in a different way than we spend time with our children. And I just have this whole conversation ready. And that um, it's with that mentality of bringing the moment on board, really, really nailing that, um, getting what I want out of, out yeah. of that. So um, there's, that's the very first stage um, of, of preparing. Then I, I, what I do is I, I tell them, if, I, if it's okay with you, I'd love to walk through your home and pretend I'm the buyer and take in those first impressions and then mm-hmm. walk through again and, and share what I've, you know, what I, uh, my ideas on how to uh, bring the home into that sell ready condition. Sell ready um, condition. Mm-hmm. Sell ready condition. So we start to depersonal, we start, I start to break them from the house, separate them from their home and start to get them to think in terms of creating a product for yeah. sale. Um, right. That's an important distinction with staging. So as opposed to decorating, we're marketing, right? This is a marketing technique. And to start to separate the seller's home to a house that's getting ready to be on the market. So starting to um, get them emotionally detached from the home so that somebody else can become emotionally attached to their home. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's smart. So the goal of staging is what? The goal of staging is absolutely to, um, well, to get the uh, most amount of money that you, mm-hmm. that you can get for a house and to sell it as quickly as possible. Um, and the benefit of selling as quickly as possible is, one, you get more money generally, but two, they don't have to live through the process of selling. And that's another just like really good selling point. You know, we want, we want to make this period of your life that's going to be a little difficult for a while. We want to make that as short as possible. Um, so those are really the goals, right? We want as much money as we can get. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's another one of my little tricks is as we're, go- you know, to bring that homeowner on board, not necessarily a trick, but method. And because um, I'm, as we walk through, I said, well, we're always going to be wanting this, this dollar. We're always going for this dollar. And I was like, well, you know, anytime they are a little resistant, it's like, well, you know, if you want to go for this dollar, that's another, um, you know, that's another story. But to get this dollar, um, we, we'll do this. We'll show off those features. We'll bring attention to the features. And um, I also like to give them an education as we go. So if you're in a, kind of a pretty standard two-story colonial house and you're looking at a living room with just a window in it, they're not understanding even what a feature is. I say, well, the light coming through that window is a feature and the size of this room is a feature. And um, so we want to maximize. We want to make this room look as big and as light as possible. Um, So it's good for them to get that education uh, without too much, without being overbearing but just little, little simple bits of education as we walk through is, is really helpful to them. Yeah. Uh, so then there, it's a, just another way to take in, you know, kind of the, the science of it rather than, you know, take that emotion away. If this is a physical thing that we're doing. It's a, uh, it really is kind of a science to it. There is a methodology to this. Um, there is a way to show, to bring your eyes to the furthest corners of the house, you know, the room. If you do that, you're taking in more of the room. So I do those little explanations um, as we go. And sometimes just rearrange things right in front of them. And they're like, oh, you know, like they get it. That you, you, you guys, stagers, are magical. I mean, there are times, I worked for a home builder for many years, and, and merchandising model homes was part of my job not to merchandise them, but to help to deliver the demographics of what people are going to look for. And then the designers would come in and design, you know, around that, that demographic, but to see, to bring to life 
something that was, you know, when you see the living room and you see a back, the back of a piece of furniture, when you walk in, you've truncated the room. Right. Right. You have truncated uh -huh. the room. So that's where the, the room starts for people is at that space. So if you just simply take the back of that furniture, move it to the side, and now the person has visual um, on whatever's in that corner that you just spoke of, you've opened up the size of that room, not by changing the structure of the home, but simply taking the piece of furniture out of the field of vision. Mm -hmm. right? And that, that, yes, that. absolutely. And that's really why um, homeowners really should, you know, either listen to an experienced realtor or, or, or get a stager because um, I think they're really, some of them are kind of dependent on um, themselves which is hard to be objective about your own things. Um, but also there's the HGTV stager, the one that has watched it. <laughs> I'm familiar. <laughs> and says, you know, and thinks they've staged their house. Um, and they'll, they'll tend to focus on little tips and tricks that they've learned. And, oh, I'm gonna put my sofa at an angle. Uh, Cause I saw that on HGTV. Well that can be appropriate in a really, really big room, but otherwise actually putting a sofa at an angle makes the room smaller. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a lot that, they, um, that the HGTV viewer, you know, seller I call them, um, they, they, they pick up bits, but they don't have the whole, the entire set of information. Mm -hmm. And they also don't have the local information they're watching a show that's in San, you know, uh, Los Angeles. And that's just a really different staging. Right. Those, are, those, are, those are the shows that you have an open house and 1,600 people come through it. That's not what happens. No. <laughs> that's TV. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it's just a really, a really different um, situation. Um, yeah. that, I get that, that. Uh, but it is fun. And I always know. I always know when somebody is, um, I look on Zillow, I look at a lot of listings. And I um, was like, oh, that, I'm pretty sure that was done by the homeowner, you know, because they yeah. focus crappy uh, on the, you know, on the table setting and you see other things just totally, totally missed. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can tell. And now when you go into a home, uh, Terry, what are the top three things would you say are the challenges that you find when somebody's getting ready to put the house on the market and you say, oh, these three things have to be achieved. What would those top three things be? Well, I'm going to repeat, showing off the features and that um, space and light and the, and the magnificent features and making sure our eyes are going to a magnificent um, fireplace immediately. So we want to get our eyes there immediately. And there was one house where it was a couple, it was a beautiful house and it was a couple of walkthroughs before I noticed this amazing coffered ceiling in their, live, in their family room. Mm. And it was because they had so much it was great interesting stuff in their family room and I I just oh that's a beautiful I want oh da, 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 da. and I, I missed that feature up there and it took, it took me a while to, to take notice of it so that's really important um, I'd say that's huge and as far as other important you know the top three um, everything I love everything and um, as close to new condition and 100% clean as possible. Um, and that's another thing that's kind of hard for the homeowner to be, um, to be objective about um, as far as the condition of things. And the, you know, there's, there's clean and then there's like super clean. And that's what I really want the homeowner to go to. So I always ask for um, professional um, I recommend professional cleaning inside and out, top to bottom, you know, the whole, the whole thing. Um, so I think that's just really huge. Um, but as far as challenge, another challenge is getting the correct volume of items in a room. Mm. Um, and not too little, you know, it's like, it's like Goldilocks and the three bears, you know, you don't want too little and you don't want too much. And it's just getting the right amount to get that, to connect, to get that emotion. Is that, is that, is that across the board type of a formula or is that specific to the room or how, how is that defined? Um, some, uh, that's, a good, uh, that's a good question. How is the right amount of stuff? Do you just get uh, in there and you just kind of feel it? 
a, a lot of it is a fee, is feel. Um, I, I, I'm proportion sensitive. <laughs> so um, I, I do recognize when there's just like too much or too little. Uh, I have to, I don't know, I have to think about where that comes from, what part of my, maybe my art training, um, where that comes from. But um, I think, I think also it's your experience because when you get in, like, like, it's almost like driving down the road, you drive down the same path every single day. But if somebody says to you, what exit do you take? Oh God, I don't remember the number. I just know I turn there because I feel it. Yeah. I think that's what part of that comes from is just you're in there and sometimes you just sit quietly and look around to feel what you feel. And wow. then you say, okay, this just is, is a little bit too much. So I think part of that must be experience, your experience, Terry. Mm -hmm. And then there are, um, when there's a lot of stuff in the house, you know, that's, um, sometimes there can be so much in the house that I can actually be a little overwhelmed with yes. what, should, what should be here. Yeah. And then I do kind of go back to a formula on that, um, actually. So there, there, there really is something. And when there's, when there's a whole lot and you need to communicate it without, um, you know, without being offensive in any way, um, the way I communicate it is um, I'll say, imagine the house, imagine this room empty. Think about you know, houses sell vacant, right? We sell vacant homes. What would a stager bring in? Mm. So I, so then they can just like wipe that room empty. And then we talk about what would I bring in? Well, I would bring in a sofa, two end tables, a coffee table. I'd bring in art. If we needed to fill out an extra corner, I'd bring in a, um, a big fluffy plant or something. And so we kind of start from there and build back. It's really in. good. And that works really well because it's really hard for them to imagine. You know, um, one of your questions um, or what, something we were going to you know, talk about was, was clutter. And um, I don't really ever use that word because it, for some it can be offensive. For some it can just be meaningless. Like they don't consider it clutter. <laughs> so good point. What, what is, you know, what is this? Um, so you can, so I'll start to define instead of clutter, I'll just be a little more specific. We are going to want to remove the personal items. And, um, but I will take it back to that. What if the room was empty and what would we bring in? And we, and I said, we want to bring as close to that as, as you can within your, you know, I was, you talked about their time and their energy and their budget. Um, they're, I'm sure they all have, do you get, do you get a budget from them for how much they are planning on spending? Sometimes, yeah. So house? we have a house that has a lot of work to do. And um, I say to them, there's, there's going to be quite a bit of things in the home that will have to be uh, taken out of the home to make the fee home feel larger and we're going to have to do some painting and replace some of the carpeting etc how much do you have set aside for this job so that we know what we're working with and if somebody says oh well i've got five hundred dollars i'm like okay we need to save a little more money because we've got a little more to do than that uh -huh. uh, so i just i try to be really straightforward and set the right expectation because the more that they do up front the more money they make on the back end because people right. can't see through it. And like you said, in the beginning of the hour, they don't want to spend their time doing that. So you can do the work now or they can pay for it later, but they're going to pay one way or another and right. it will make more money if they do it up front rather than wait, which is one of the questions, Terry, that I wanted to ask you is what happens when people say, you know, this really dark blue carpet or the black walls that we painted black so that we could sleep better um, or the um, appliances that are avocado or the avocado countertops. Um, I'm just gonna leave them, give them a credit because I don't want to put my taste into the home and somebody else comes in later and says, oh, that's not what I would have done. How do you respond to that? And I'll, and I'll give you from my perspective how we respond. Okay. Well, um, to answer the, my taste, their concern about my taste, the, the answer is you just, you do something neutral, what, um, what all the buyers are, are buying now. And I'll, I'll tell them, you know, the, the number one most common color paint from Sherwin-Williams is agreeable gray. 
So that's not your taste. That's the broadest taste right now. So you don't have to worry. They don't have to worry about their taste. There, there are some standards now. Right. Um, and then as far as leaving a dark wall, which I've seen, and it's, it's very um, unsettling for some, um, or a, you know, royal blue carpet, um, the problem with saying I'm going to um, just leave that for the homeowner is you've, you've, you've lost a certain percentage of buyers because you, you lost the opportunity of creating that emotion. What you really want to do is get that emotion immediately, fall in love immediately. And when you start ticking off, like, well, there's one thing wrong, there's two things wrong. There was one time I said uh, in front of a realtor, I said, you know, three, three strikes and you're out. And she goes, no, one strike, one strike and you're out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's okay. Yeah. One strike and you're out. So you really can't, um, you can't lose those opportunities. You know, you have to... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Terry. Go ahead. Well, it's just it's just about losing that that there's going to be buyers that just are not interested in doing that, and, and you're you're reducing um, the amount of potential buyers. And I'll give you an example of that that I know it's true. Um, here's a perfect example. This was several years ago. We had a house for sale. They have they had a specific deadline that they had to achieve, and it was very a very small window. And I said, you've got to get this dark blue carpet out. It's too dark and it's too massive. You've got it on two different levels. There's way too much dark carpeting in here. Swap it out, put tan in there. Oh, I don't want to put my taste in there. I said, you just got to get tan. It, it's, it's a neutral color. And most people appreciate the, 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 the cleanliness, if you will, of that color. And they said, no, no, no. We weren't getting any showings. And she's, I said, we can reduce the price or we can put the carpet in. She said, I'll put the carpet in. I said, let's find all the details out. It was going to take a week to two weeks to get everything done, which we didn't have the time to do. So I, I got the color palette of the carpet they were going to do. And I asked a um, person, um, a, um, um, I don't know if it was through Fiverr or if it was just a uh, person who can change colors of the carpet. So we took the blue carpet, changed it to the tan color that it was going to be. And in the agent remarks, I said, this is the car color, the, the carpeting is currently blue. It will be changed out on this date to this color. But I changed it in the system. So when people are looking at the MLS, the multiple listing service, uh -huh. they see the pictures of the after repair versus uh -huh. the blue. We got activity immediately and sold the house immediately because they saw the tan oh. carpet, not the blue. So the blue carpet was in there when they got there, but they knew what was going to happen. So we went from having no activity to having activity as a result of changing that out. So they photoshopped, yeah. photoshopped, that's the word I was looking for earlier. Yeah. And it got done. So people have to see it. Uh -huh. That's and the number one. Cannot. Yeah, the number one benefit of staging is is the photos people mm -hmm. are making their decisions um, i mean i've been telling the story for a long time and now it's even more <laughs> more intense about how people are making their decisions about whether it used to be to see a home now it's whether to buy a home based on on photos um, so it's key to get those um to get those photos right and you know that that reminds me of a little story of um a house yeah, this is a gorgeous house beautifully decorated probably 20 years ago, but still just gorgeous. Um, so it was very difficult to get the homeowner to, um, to make any changes because everybody complimented her decorating and she, you know, it was, it was beautiful. But um, I wanted chair moved out and she was so resistant. It's a beautiful chair and a long story. So what I did right in front of her was take my iPad, take a picture of the room and, and then I showed her, I said, see the, this chair is blocking the view of your fireplace from this angle, which is where the, per, where the buyer is going to be making their decision about this room from this very spot. And your chair is blocking the view of your mm -hmm. fireplace. So it really goes back to those, to those photos being just so important. It's a really important sell. 
And I like the idea of having that one thing in the room that says, this is the central point that we need people to see. Let's make sure that everything that everything that we do in this room is to make that the focal point and take the distractions away from that focal point. Right. I love exactly. that. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. Really. What about really. area rugs? How do you feel about area rugs? Um, for the, for the most part, I tell all small rugs, any small rug go. Um, most area rugs, um, larger rugs can go, it really depends on the size of the room and the color scheme and everything. You know, if we have beautiful floors, I want to see as much floor as possible. But every once in a while, I might want, I think something, I'm going to back up, I think something like that lifestyle um, that we're selling, I think comfort sells. People want to be comfortable. And every once in a while, there will be a, a rug situation and they would have, you know, really kind of nailed the furnishings and the rug and it just like looks cozy and inviting. And so those rugs get to stay. Yeah. Uh, but for the most um, part, we want to show off um, as much wood floor as possible or, yeah. you know, beautiful tile or whatever they have. Do area rugs make a room smaller, appear smaller? more comfortable but smaller would you say um well anytime you're creating a line you talked about this with the sofa anytime you're creating a line you have reduced the size of something um like a chair rail makes a room a little smaller um so it it, it can but um sometimes you want that sometimes yeah. a room can be too big or cavernous and what do we do with all this space yeah. Um, and so, you know, you would want a rug in a, in a cavernous room. Um, so it's, you know, with any, there's, there's rules and then there's rules you break. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. What about um, paint colors? So, so sometimes we go into a home and again, we don't live in uh -huh. our homes the same way that we stage a home. So we may be very comfortable in a home that has um, light purple paint or um, a, a very dark wall at a dining room, for example. And we may need to change that because of the, um, the way that it makes you feel. Maybe, maybe it's not a warm color, or maybe it is just too bold. Or another one that's very distracting is when there's different colors in every room, right? So you might live like that, but when you sell, you can't have seven different colors in the house. It's much better, cleaner to keep it consistent um, or have a minimal number of changes in the room. So what, talk to us about paint color throughout the home and in, in just globally, what do you talk, how, when you talk about paint color? Well, all right, to, to have, when you're talking about um, all these different colors, what are the disadvantages of that, that um, besides really reflecting of, you know, uh, it doesn't have that broad appeal for taste. Um, is it does make the house smaller. Anytime you're breaking something up, you're, anytime you're reducing the flow, you're making it smaller. Mm -hmm. So if you have the, a, a lighter neutral throughout, you have just made your house larger. Yeah, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, and you are also a lighter, you're also reflecting light. So you're making it lighter. Um, and um, so there's that. And then there's also just the what's popular. Gray is popular right now. Neutral, you know, these light neutrals um, are popular. Um, sometimes we might go a little darker to make, uh, I like to go to the second tone instead of the first tone on the strip. I like to go to the second tone. It gives a little, um, a little life to a room, not be cold or, or sterile. Um, but also, you want to be right. A lot of people want to. They say, "I'm going to stage the house. I'm going to paint everything white." And I say, "Don't do white. It's too. It's like sterile. a hospital. Too sterile. Yeah. Sterile. Right. I, I, um, I'm glad you said that. And then you also want paint to make um, to make the features pop. So if you walk into a room that's olive green, I'll say, "Well, it is a beautiful color, but it's the olive green is the feature of the room." The kitchen cabinets are not the feature. The color became the feature. Uh, it's competing and with the cabinetry. 
Yes. Yeah, so it com hmm. so it competes with the um, with the feature of the room, um, and that's where giving that little education as you go through. Then they oh okay, you know I get it. Yeah. And then we're willing to do what needs to be done, but um, we definitely want the feature to pop. So if we have a white kitchen, then then going with a little kind of cooler gray will really make those white cabinets, you know, really gleam. Hmm. Um, so that's uh, interesting. Uh, it's really interesting. I didn't realize that. That's, I've never put that piece, I felt it, but I didn't know that it was because of competing with the feature. So thanks for sharing that. What about uh, family photos? Talk to us about that. That's a, that's a big one. And people say, I see that every, every, there should be no pictures of my family anywhere in the home. I saw that on HGTV. And what is your thought on family photos? Well, I will lead with family photos because everybody knows it, everybody has this story. And it's, again, it's that other little technique of bringing them on board, of, of telling something, you know, that they kind of know that they're already going to be comfortable with hearing. But, um, so yes, family photos, but I don't necessarily um, say all photos go. And um, I say it's more about if you need a little sculptural thing in a corner, it's about frame color for me, you know, uh -huh. um, and it just can't pop out at you in any way. Um, but it can also be kind of a, if it's a family room in Severna Park, that's all about family, um, it's, a, it's okay. I don't know, you might hear different from other stagers, but I, I allow one or two. Um, I think it brings a little warmth and real life into a, into a home. I did too, I, Carrie, did I break all... a rule of yours? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, you, you're, you're spot on. I, I, that's how I prepare them is I say, I don't like walking into a home um, that feels white and sterile and no family photos. We need to bring life into the home, which is why we add the color, which is why we, uh, a family photo here and there does not offend me whatsoever. And I think that people, when they see that, they feel the sense of um, whatever their family is, however that family, what that looks like to them, how their family is set up. I think it brings that to the staging, which I think is, is a critical piece to it, is that people feel the ability to move themselves and their whatever family that is into that home. I think that's really important piece of, of staging a home. I think so too. I think it's all about connecting, right? Yeah. That's the staging helps you to connect to a home. And um, you know, those that, that warmth of family helps you connect to a home. Yeah. I wanted to take a quick break. Angie, do we have any questions yet? Uh, we don't have any questions. We have some great comments with uh, great info, some some brilliant tips. So everyone is definitely appreciative of this conversation. Good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. And, you know, I sometimes I get the question of, of why do I have to stage a home? Um, I think my home is in great condition. So I, I want to impress upon people that it is not to um, downplay your home. It is simply changing from a house that you live in to a house that you're now selling. So it's a completely different thing. It's a marketing tool. It is not, it is not just a decorating idea, right? I want to separate those two things. It's not just decorating your home. There is, you heard Terry talking about the psychology of the things that she's doing is to, is to make everything to that, to that focal point. That's great. So, uh, so again, I don't have experience staging homes. I have thir probably 30 years real estate experience. Um, in different ways, but so I might get the feeling of it, but you just defined it as you brought all of this for the focal point. I think that's that's brilliant, right? And that's what that's why we bring stagers in, and that's why realtors don't stage homes unless they're experienced in that. Why we bring a stager in to say, I don't know why I feel these things. You do it because you've been you've been trained to do that kind of stuff. So Terry, if you would, I would like to bring up some of the photos of things that you have already staged. And if you would, just walk us through a little bit and talk about the psychology of why you took this, made it this, um, to expose the, the greatest features of the, the room to the people. So if you would, is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so this is this is a um, den. Okay, in in a house that um, 
when you walked in, this is what you saw. This was the first room I happen to know because this is one of my listings. Um, but the first room on the left as you walked in. So that is the before picture and then the after picture is here. So Terry, do you want me to stay on the before picture or the after picture as you discuss it? Oh, well, all right, let's go back to the before. Okay. So, and as you said, that was the very first room that you look at. And, um, you know, I learn a lot from realtors and what I, what I do. Um, and I, I do remember somebody saying that that first impression, that very first emotion is, you know, is driving kind of the rest of the, of the, um, of the tour through the house. Like if you see something uncomfortable from the beginning, you're going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be looking for more things that are wrong. And if you're excited and lightened up and refreshed, you're going to continue thinking that's what's going to be happening. So you really have to nail, that, you know, that entry. Yep. And uh, the, but the configuration of their foyer, there really wasn't, I don't think a location, you know, you couldn't put a little table or anything, maybe a mirror, but this is what you saw. And um, it is dark. And you just see these giant bookcases and it, uh, it's just, there's no, there's no warmth and there's no, um, there's, why is that unappealing? <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just, well, you're looking at a lot of stuff, yeah, I think. It's just, stuff. it's just, you're just looking at hard, hard bookcases and a hard desk and there's, there's nothing that really kind of draws you in. I think the darkness of it. And um, this, the, the owners loved this house and they loved their decorating, you know? And so, um, you know, there is an art to having this conversation of, you know, just wanting to lighten and brighten um, because that's, that's what's gonna show off, make this room as big and comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's go ahead and look at the next. So, um, I don't know if you noticed, but we did switch rugs mm -hmm. from this room. We switched the family room rug. So this is a little bit larger rug. Old rug and to new the rug. The color is, is a little lighter, a little fresher, and more in proportion to the room. And, um, but the paint color, you can see, makes a huge difference. And they had that burgundy wall, and it was going to cost quite a bit for them to move those bookcases and um, behind, and I said, you know what? We're gonna achieve what we want to achieve without you having to do that and to spend that money. And anytime they hear that they don't have to spend money, they're very happy and they're yes. more willing to do the things when they do have to, to spend money. Um, even a little thing like um, we moved a piece of art around and that kind of brings your eyes over to the, to the width. And we started, you can see maybe we thinned out the bookcases a little bit. Um, and just make it not the room just about the books, but about the whole um, library feel. This, yeah, this room normally would have been a, a, a living room. Um, and I, I love how the new buyers are, are so practical about spaces now. And so back in my day, we had a living room that nobody ever used. And um, so this now is a really useful space and a space somebody can see, yeah, I can sit there and do my work. Like, look at the difference in that bookcase where there's a lot of stuff, right? This is how we live. This, this picture is how we live yep. versus staging it. I mean, look at the darkness in the room. And then you look at this where it's minimized and bright and light. And it's not, it doesn't feel heavy when you walk into the room now. Really lightened up and fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a second one. And this is just the living room. So you wanna talk about this a little bit, Terry? So yes, this is their um, family area, kind of open to the kitchen dining, which is great. Um, and, but, but it's a dark room and the, those two big chairs are kind of crowding that fireplace. And um, it, there's a, you see the ottoman, that, chair and ottoman were in the way of the passage to the kitchen to the left uh, so they had some great things but just um there's just no kind of flow to the room i think the features are really kind of broken up in uh, here okay 
now the focal point is that fireplace, right? Now the focal point's the fireplace. Uh, we brought in a different rug, lightened and brightened the room. And we brought in some, uh, this couple um, loved, they just loved their, their heavy, dark things. That's what really appealed to them. But I, I really felt like it needed to be lightened up and freshened up and shown with a little more comfort to it. So we just brought in those pillows and um, little updated things, um, moved some of their art around to get more in proportion. See, we took the chair out, brought in our own lamps, anywhere we could bring in white and light, we did. You see that the drapes are gone. Yes, the heavy drapes are gone. Uh, heavy drapes are gone. Um, we're just pushing the chairs aside. Uh, I think it's a really pretty room. I do too. It's beautiful. And just like what we talked about before with this ottoman down here, can you see when I move my mouse? Can you see that? I'm curious. Yeah, I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you, this home is situated that when you open up the front door, this is your, this is what you see. And, mm -hmm. and again, this chair is going to truncate that space because you're walking in and seeing the back of a piece of furniture. Uh -huh. And I don't know why I'm so sensitive to that, but I just, I, I, I prefer never to see the back of that piece of furniture when you're walking into a room because uh -huh. it, may, it stops. That's where, that's stops where, yeah, your eye stops at that point. I don't want your eye to stop there. I want your eye to stop there. Um, the other thing we were talking about rugs and how it makes rooms, you know, how the effect of rugs on rooms, you can see the larger rug makes the room look larger mm -hmm. if you go back. You know, a more expansive room. Ah, so if you, so if you we follow did, we it did cover up wood floor, um, but the wood floor began from the very start of this long, long hallway. We saw, we see a lot. We can't yeah. tell by this tour, but you see a lot of wood floor still in this house. Yeah. And, uh, I think it needed a little softening and comfort. If that wasn't there, we had the brown furniture and the brown chairs and the brown sofa. It just would have been a lot of brown. That's so a good that's point, one of the things right? where, you know, you just need to know whether to break the rule or not. Right. And that's a good point because that is a very long space from the front door through the foyer, through a very long and more narrow living room here. So you broke it up and said, okay, let's break the rule because the long lines are going to make it feel too long in this case. So break it up with, keep that rug there. Yeah. Is that right? I think that one came in from the library, actually. So yeah, we we moved rugs, <laughs> we moved furniture. The homeowner was great, though. He was great. Yeah, we made piles, and he started, you know, just hauling things down to the basement. Yep. And here's the dining room. Yeah. Um, so in here, there's just um, there's kind of a disparate. There's a couple of things going on here. There's a disparate of style. Um, I do like to have one consistent style. They have elegant, elegant things in their house, and I wanted to keep that going. So just having this tin can in there, you know, that's, it's, it's too country. It's, it's a little bit of a distraction for me. There's more furniture in here that need, than needed to be in here, and that gallery on the wall, uh, just all these little, you can see how, just it, this really goes to the photograph, and so that might be a gorgeous gallery, but it just doesn't photograph well. It just mm. takes the attention. To me, that gallery is where my eyes go, um, yeah. and uh, but and not to imagining my family sitting in this room, you know, dining together. You don't do that when you when you're standing here. You're taking in all these things, and but you're not imagining your family sitting at that table, and that's really the goal. So imagine your family dining there. Wow. So we, just, we, we found a, there was a leaf. We lengthened the table, brought in um, one of these chairs, or two of these chairs were actually over in the, in the library. We brought them in, simplified the furnishing. You can see we um, took the gallery down and the art that was on the left side, we just moved over to the right side because we already had a lot of stuff going on on the left side because the room is over there on the left. So um, we did keep that one little feature in the corner. Um, that's kind of one of those lifestyle touches and it's set up, 
you know, like a little wine bar or something. Um, so you can imagine, you know, that serving wine. Right. Um, so I do like those lifestyle touches. I think they're important. So, so people seem to think that a picture has to be on each wall or it looks barren. And I see here that you don't have anything there and that feels fine to me. You, you obviously agree that something doesn't have to be on every wall. No, nothing. No, definitely don't have something on every wall. And, um, I, I just remember learning that from, from an art teacher, really, where just space is, right. is calming, you know, just having space, just let your eye just stop. Mm. and um, then you take in what needs to be taken in. Nice. Okay. Move to the next room. Bathroom. What, bathroom. This is just color change, mm -hmm. brushing up, just keeping that one consistent color. Um, this drives me nuts because I, my towel is crooked. I'm like, how did I do that? I, <laughs> I almost didn't do this whole series because my towel was crooked, but... <laughs> Uh, Maybe you can change um, the angle. But this this one, the art, we brought that in and it was an elegant home and it did have these burgundy touches. So that art was very specifically chosen for this property. Um, I think it's a really elegant piece. It's actually an original. Um, and every once in a while, just like a higher end looking house, I'll bring in the, um, you know, an original piece of art uh, to, 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 for that appeal, for that kind of high end appeal. But the difference is pretty substantial. So you're talking about, I don't know, how much does it cost approximately to paint a room? A couple hundred dollars? Right? Yeah. If you go right. from dark to a completely different look with a couple hundred right. dollars of paint. That's significant. Mm -hmm. Significant change. Really. Another bathroom. Removing drapery is um, pretty, um, pretty important. I'd say 95% of the drapery that I see, I ask to be removed you know that's pretty much one of my rules um but actually that dining room we did leave the drapery up the burgundy because we were kind of leaving a getting a little color trail going through the house that gets that consistent um gets that flow going to have a color trail so it did stay in the dining room i do like some fabric in a room um here though it's just not allowed to come fabric. to my house ever by the way <laughs> no, for staging for staging for stage you should see my house i have like 17 different paint colors in my house yeah i know right so it's right. just you know it's a whole different a whole different thing the way we live the way, we live, the way we stage are two different things yeah. wow dramatic yeah isn't that pretty dramatic <laughs> that same, oh actually this house i um so i don't just go and use agreeable gray for every house i do custom select the, the colors to each house um, based on, I usually go with the kitchen cabinets and the floor and find a neutral that goes with both the kitchen cabinets and the floor. It's kind of where I start with my color selection. Um, in this house, I actually chose a lighter shade upstairs. Um, so that's unusual. A lot of times it's just the, the whole house, the same color. If it's, this is a large, this was a large home and a large home can definitely take a different, a different shade. Um, it kind of gives you a little different feel, a little, um, I keep using the word fresh, but I, you know, if that, that, that fresh feel, um, I think is really important now with so many people stuck home, nobody's feeling fresh <laughs> at all, um, light and airy. And, um, I do like that, that feeling in a, in a home. Um, yeah. well, uh, I the upstairs, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to talk about this little, this um, upstairs had a lot of this. You'll see this turquoise kind of going throughout. Um, <clears throat> I do a, kind of a lot with, with turquoise. I think it's just, um, it's an appealing, it's kind of that broad appeal for that yeah. pop of color. Uh, pretty much most people can connect to, to those turquoise and those blues and they look great with the grays that are in right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, go through a couple more before and after pictures, Terry, but in the um, interest of time, if you could just tell us what you're doing during COVID, is there anything you're doing differently and how do you do appointments if people don't want people in their home? And while you answer that, I'm just going to scroll through so that the viewers. Okay. Can... okay. Well, Diane, it really hasn't um, <clears throat> affected me all that much and my business all that much because um, for the most part, my clients are vetted by their 
by their realtors and um, there are they, there are homeowners that are comfortable having me come into the home with a mask and with gloves and standing six feet away and um, showing, I love this one. I just love that one. I do too, um, what a difference. You change the yeah. entire purpose of the room. You know, and that's another, um, another I, I just interrupted myself, I hope that's okay. But another um, use for staging is showing, showing purpose um, of a room. And um, this one was a little confusing as far as how we're going to use this room. And there was no, it's a family neighborhood, and there was really no evidence of children in this house. The homeowners didn't have children. And um, there was no evidence of kids in it, you know. So I wanted this little child appeal. But, um, and then for the hands-on staging of the occupied homes, and that's what what this is, um, I do just ask that the house be professionally cleaned before I come in. And um, we're in the house about two and a half hours, rearranging their things. We're covered, our hands are covered. Um, so you're, you're going it, by the it's only, it's only the safe, it's only the homeowners that feel safe doing it, obviously, that, that we're doing it. Um, for those that, that aren't feeling comfortable with it, there is virtual staging. Um, I'm, I'm a stager, so I, you know, don't love that style of staging and there's a, that's a whole, you know, story, but, um, it's, it's definitely, you know, a thing to do if you're need to sell your house and, um, and you can't have a stager in your house. Right. Excellent. Well, Terry, I don't think we have any other questions. And um, I just wanted to say thank you. I learned a lot on this call. It was it was very interesting because again, I, I know from experience, um, I can feel things, but I didn't know why I was I was focused on that. And you have really cleared a lot of that up. So I thank you. And on this page, we have your contact information. Should anybody want to get in touch with you, um, please feel free to reach out to Terry Cooch and um, she can give you some great advice and, and some staging tips. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Diane. This was a lot of fun. Excellent. Thanks so much, Terry, and everybody else. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye now. Bye-bye.